short introduction on me i started off like many of you over here as a parent uh, who wanted something very different from education and somehow felt our country schooling was all about literacy which wasn't wrong because that's what we needed about 25 30 years back and i still think that a big part of our country still needs schooling to fulfill the basic literacy uh, perspective right uh, so but then a lot of us who slowly moved up, up in the maslow's uh, triangle we need something more than uh, just literacy for our children because that's something that we as parents are capable of giving to our children and hence my uh, my search for something for my son from the year 2000 um, didn't give me an answer to uh, my need uh, to give him a toolkit for life and not just a packet of certificates and that's how my homeschooling journey started my moving away from corporate uh, happened my studying uh, about psychology about children about education about how human beings can reach their true potential all of this started and uh, slowly and steadily i think with the with the blessings of a lot of parents that took note of my work um it grew into uh, two big organizations now which uh, are trying to uh, take my work to many more families and many more children and i'm so glad that now the new nep whatever they are saying is something that i had coined 10 years before and it's exact it is like saying that the methodology is perfect for india so i'm also trying to help the government in many aspects in seeing how the nep can come into force uh, in the in the quickest uh, time possible right so that is who i am i've been a homeschooler my son finished his 12th through homeschooling itself through nios so um i have always seen that uh, all sides of education per se where you go to mainstream schools where you go to alternate schools where you homeschool where you unschool uh, all of these perspectives we have this workshop or this webinar might not be the time to discuss all of those areas i will be having many of these um i will try and have where i can bring you on to discuss various aspects of my experience but for today we'll stick to nios okay so what is nios nios is national institute of open schooling and it's the world's largest open schooling system this is something that we must know uh, it's also the world's largest open schooling system because we are such a huge country right obviously it's encompassing uh so many states so many people uh, but nis is also very uh, famous in the middle east in africa and all these places where uh, people don't have access to education in the way that we do we have schools in every nook and corner and yet a big part of our country doesn't have access to education but uh, there are many countries where due to many different uh, limitations the children cannot attend regular school and you, we all must take note that this is by ministry of education india a lot of people have myths that it is open schooling so it is not regulate regulated maybe it doesn't have a proper structure maybe the curriculum is outdated and all of those things no it is by the ministry of education india and ministry of education only has two boards in our country one is the uh, cbsc board and the other is the nios so all the other boards that you are seeing are not by the ministry of education india and if something is by the ministry of education of india definitely it will be accepted in our country and across the world also because uh, it has um, uh, been used by the government of a country right so that is something that we need to make sure we know please also uh, share this with anyone and everyone you come across because there are so many myths that keep people away from utilizing one of the best gifts of uh um, you know in the area of education that india has given this is by far the best uh, board that india has it's just because of uh, not being aware we aren't using this system but now uh, after the new nep has come and the pandemic has come nios is um you know um something that everybody wants to know about so this is a good time to uh, bring some limelight to this um, board you may also have this question that if it is so good then why, how come we all don't know why hasn't it been used it's only because it is by the ministry of education it does not have to um you know uh, popularize it or it does not have to advertise about it or something like that secondly it was not made in the way cbsc was cbsc was made because uh, the whole country had to become literate and from kindergarten to grade 12 they needed a structured education system but what about all those people who don't fall into that system 
what if you're 10 years old and you need to start uh, doing a course what if you did till seventh grade in the british system uh, before independence and now you want to uh, complete your education or what if you belong to business families or what if you didn't have access to schools there were so many many people that fell outside of the education uh, system uh, that india was trying to create out of uh, from cbsc that's why they started the nios system um, and nios was mostly used by all of these people and we uh, all that had the access to go to schools had the option of choosing between cbsc and icsc and now we have some international boards as well and that is why we never look beyond it as to what is available beyond it right and going to school is considered to be the norm in our country and and i was doesn't expect you to be in school at all so obviously uh, this is something that we didn't know only because we didn't seek for it it's not because it didn't exist so please the right to know uh, please go on mute correct sir you will be surprised to know that ke ho sange ha it was set up in 1979 um chetna can you please mute everybody because we can't hear you i have muted everybody but uh, i don't know what's happening hey you have to keep the controls with you when you say mute all it says allow participants to unmute i have removed that yes uh, so uncheck that so no one will be able to unmute them from all their own yeah let's try now okay all right but i have to go back <laughs> okay so uh you have it was set up in 1979 so it's a pretty old board it was called open schooling under cbsc uh that's what i was trying to tell some time back and uh, then in 89 the national open school is what uh was set up and um, here in it kind of separated from Uh, being under cbsc and in 2002 it was uh, given the name nios as it is known today because it did a lot more than just school completion it was not about 10th and 12th but it was about uh, bringing in vocational training and many more things and in fact in the new nep the scope of nios is being broadened to a very large extent so uh, i think uh, national institute of open schooling is a apt name for it now so uh don't be bored by some of these slide slides it's very important for you to know some of these aspects because then you will understand why nios does what it does right um there are very important words in the vision which is inclusive learning i have never seen a board as inclusive as uh, nios and you'll see in some time who all does it include under its wings Uh, what all groups of people can be included under the nios um, system and how beneficial it is to everybody uh, this is very important to note because even on this call today there are many people who are having to homeschool or choose nios because of different circumstances they are in okay but though it is being inclusive it is giving you an universal education uh, something that is um accepted throughout the world it is giving you access to a quality school education the curriculum is nothing short of the cbsc um, um curriculum that you see uh, and it is focusing on skill development as well because of all its vocational courses uh, and the biggest part of nios is flexibility what flexibility gives is competency based education where every learner can learn at his pace Uh, in the way he does and uh, will the board will fit around the child rather than the child fitting around the board these are very very important things to note about this board and you will see later why uh, and how it does this okay so uh, the mission is very clear right they want to give uh, relevant education to students up to the pre degree level because after that you have the igno in our country um they want to make sure that the whole country is literate uh, and everyone has access to education and um, it's important to note that education liberates people education not literacy as, uh, by itself okay so this is something that uh, their mission was and i think they are accomplishing it to a great extent 
Okay, so who are these target groups that can utilize uh, NIOS? And um, that is why it is inclusive. And you'll be stunned to see the first group of students because everybody thinks NIOS is for somebody uh, that might not be good in education. You will hear these myths. Um, it, NIOS is for those students who uh, can't do the regular system because there is something not right with them. Or NIOS is for uh, those uh, students who don't want to get into entrance coaching and all those things because through NIOS you can't get into those things. But the biggest pool of people who take NIOS are these students who want to focus on their entrance coaching. And why does it help? I tell you. And I have used this in the past five years in, in my school. And even now, uh, we have options for entrance coaching plus uh, NIOS uh, integrated programs in our 11th and 12th. And trust me, we have more takers for that than the uh, state board uh, combination, the PUC combination. So that's the first one. The second one is homeschoolers. Uh, until the pandemic happened, we homeschoolers were a group of um, uh, weird people, okay? Somebody that didn't want to be in the system, somebody didn't, uh, some people didn't like the curriculum, some people wanted to have their own way of uh, teaching, some people wanted to grow as a family, um, some others wanted to pursue something else like farming or beekeeping and various things like that. Um, and of course, there were a lot of children that couldn't really physically go to school and hence they did homeschooling. But once the pandemic happened, now we're having a lot of pandemic schoolers, quarantine schoolers, whatever you may call them. And in that journey over one year, parents have realized, oh my God, there is so much that we can do together as a family. And uh, with respect to academics, there is so little that my child is doing in school, of course, depending on what kind of school you're in. And uh, why can't I then homeschool, right? So it's opening up now to many more people who are calling themselves as homeschoolers. Homeschoolers is a very broad term, I must tell you. Uh, I call myself a homeschooler just so that everybody understands, but I was more on an unschooling journey and we could talk about it another time. Uh, of course, sports persons and artists and any children who are engaged in any, anything professional that they're pursuing because of which they cannot be in a full-time school. School dropouts, school dropouts do not happen only because you're not good academically. School dropouts happen because of financial situations, because of the region where children uh, live in and because of many other reasons. And uh, there are a lot of abandoned children and uh, orphans, all of this in our country as well. And they might not have had um, you know, the opportunity to continue with education. Uh, that these are all those students. Um, socially and economically deprived, I just uh, spoke about it. Women and girls, there's still a lot of communities where women and girls after a particular age are not allowed to go in the public and uh, you know study. It can also happen because of the security issues in such uh, places. Uh, then you have the migratory population, people who are, uh, you saw during the pandemic, how many people were displaced and how many people are there who moved away from their um, you know, hometowns in search of work. And those people have become nomadic in nature where they have to go wherever work takes them because that's the only way of survival for them. So that population, uh, definitely people with disabilities and uh, the unemployed youths who want to bring on a certification or two so that they can get back into, um, you know, earning for themselves. So these are all the kind of people. That's why NIOS is the most inclusive. Pick any board and you will not find uh, this inclusion. Okay, so remember I spoke about flexibility. Why will a person who wants IIT, JEE and all those things want to study here? What is the benefit for a person who's already working who wants to study here? Um, why would homeschoolers want to pick something like this? Because you, the whole reason you moved out is because you don't want a structure, right? This uh, is because of the flexibility that NIOS offers and I've seen it firsthand and um, I truly uh, believe in what they're saying. Uh, one is you study anywhere, anytime. You have NIOS at the third grade level, fifth grade level and eighth grade level, but that's not compulsory. When you're 14, you register and you write your 10th grade exam and thereafter you write your 12th grade exam. And you can study from anywhere, anytime. All the books are available online, okay? Now there is a particular way to do this curriculum and I will speak about it if I forget, please do ask me later on also. Uh, when, when we uh, speak about uh, study anywhere, anytime, we also have to 
focus on learning in india most of the time when we give something for a child to learn we are mostly focused on the output in terms of an examination that's very very easy to do in nis but the experience and uh, the knowledge that you need to gain needs a very different way of uh, uh, doing it right so the admission is valid for 5 years uh, which means that once you register you have 5 years to complete the course and the board is not going to throw you out because you didn't do well in the first or second attempt uh, even after 5 years in case you need to extend you can re-register and you can continue it you have nine chances for completion of the course in the period of this 5 years that you get uh because they have exams twice a year uh and uh, that's a very good thing because again i will complete my course once i reach mastery of the subject which is what is competency based education which is what is the best kind of education for a child this whole grade wise year wise curriculum wise curriculum that we have in our country the way we run run our education system that limits a child because the child has to fit into the system the system is not fitting around the child but in nis what happens is when you're ready you give the examination there's a choice of subjects five is your minimum with english compulsory you can even go up to seven if you want to uh, have a uh, have no more subjects that you want to try uh, learning but what i have seen is uh, many of our children that uh, study with me they go even beyond this because you don't have to write a board exam in every subject all the curriculum is available uh, so most take five subjects but they study many times up to 7 8 or even 9 because uh, it's it's very engaging curriculum is very engaging curriculum is also self paced so a child can easily read and understand uh, and my uh, group of children are always focused on learning so it's not about writing an exam so you can take your children uh, you know on a very beautiful journey of discovering through these subjects the study material is free like i said the exam is twice a year um there are tutor marked assessments tutor marked assessments uh, can be marked uh, by uh, uh, the center each one of you when you register to an ih will get a center and that center will provide you somebody that can uh, correct these assignments for you a lot of um, information is given on how to write these ass assignments um and you can write your exam in any recognized regional languages and as much as i know there are about 26 of them you can accumulate credits and uh, the best part of what nios again the inclusion part there is nothing on your certificate other than your name your uh, date of birth and all those general things and your marks they do not put whether your special needs whether you fail thrice and then you got to this uh, you got uh, a pass mark or whatever it is right there is no special symbol or mark in certificates um and you can transfer the credits for up to two, two subjects and you'll know why in some time uh, and if you've done your ita then you can uh, take three subjects and complete your 10th uh, and your 12th in case uh, you haven't completed it so once again a lot of inclusion comes into the picture okay so what are all the ways in which this um nios presents itself one it is recognized by aiu it's recognized by the medical council it's recognized by pharmacy council which means after nios you can go into any field uh that you want in any college right there is of course um an understanding we need to have that you cannot take non science subjects in 10th grade and then ask for uh sorry in 11th 12th grade and then ask for engineering or medicine seat right so obviously you're going to take subjects that are in line with the entrance exams or the colleges that you want to get into then you have the tutor mark assignments that you will do and uh, you have something called as a on demand exam which is really beautiful um what happens here is whenever you are ready you can go and speak to uh, your center and they will create uh, an exam for you uh, every month they take in names and then they have so it's not only twice in a year but whenever you are ready also you can write this exam and the rest of these are uh, where uh, nios is actually uh, conducting sessions and uh, they are available here for self learning purposes so nios like i said has two aspects right one is the obe and uh, the which is for children below 14 years of age 
uh, of course it's available for beyond as well but uh, below 14 years of age at uh, third grade fifth grade and eighth grade um, and uh, the, the the whole lessons are again available uh, on the nirs website and you register and you write your exams it's only at three levels um, now do you need to do this no you don't do you don't need to but uh, if you do it uh, for uh, families that want some kind of affirmation that my child is moving ahead you might want to do something like this so this is an optional uh, optional thing in 10 and 11 10 and 12 grade 10 and 12 it's called the secondary and the senior secondary you have four streams and i'll tell you what these four streams are uh you can register under four streams and i just now told you that five subjects are what is needed you can go up to seven english is compulsory practicals are compulsory if you are taking data entry operations home science physics chemistry uh, mathematics biology if you take any of these subjects uh and mathematics as well you will have to do the practicals and there are about 30 practicals in each of them and it's recognized all over the world so the stream 1 you know just now you saw that there are stream 1 stream 2 stream 3 stream 4 right so what are these streams stream 1 is the general category all of us whose children are 14 years as on 31st january or 31st july there are two registration times for nis whenever they are this age you can Uh, register yourself for the tenth grade examination. If you're from a school, please give the TC. If you're not from a school, then sign a self certificate that I have studied enough to be able to pursue the secondary course. You do not need to show any TC from anywhere. Okay, it takes one year to complete the tenth grade. But my sincere advice: do not rush and complete that way. The if your intention is just school completion. Uh, curriculum completion and getting a certificate then perhaps yes but if you take 2 years the children are able to do many activities around the lesson plans that are given in nios uh, the children are able to go deeper into the subject connected to real life uh, maybe also connected to couple of internships here and there or um, meet certain people in that area um, whatever they are studying lot of things can be done lot of activities can be done so that this learning that has that is coming through the nios subjects is useful for them in life it's not just a check in the tick box a tick tick in the check box saying that i have completed my 10th grade so sincere advice to all parents please do not rush okay um the senior secondary once you finish your 10th grade you can do senior secondary uh, but you should be 15 years old Uh, it is compulsory so you can't write your 12th directly so what is the stream 2 stream 2 is maybe you could not clear the public examination elsewhere or you could not you know for some reason you could not do it so you can bring uh, the failed mark sheet or the admit card uh, of the other board and you can register in nios and complete your board without losing the year then you have the uh, stream 3 and stream 4 which are on demand exams which are open throughout the year again these are for those people uh, who want to write directly or who want to clear the public examination uh, of elsewhere because they couldn't clear it and uh, you can take uh, part admission as well so what this is very beneficial so one of my friends daughter she wanted to get into uh, flying she wanted to become a pilot and she hadn't taken science in her 12th grade and physics is compulsory for uh, uh, this career so she could go back and take just physics and complete her uh, requirement for that course so this is something that is amazing and it's available to all of us not just our children uh, because nios doesn't have um, you know classes all through the uh, year they have something called as pcp this pcp is contact program for your child and each one of you since you'll be getting a study center around your place of residence the pcp classes will be conducted there those are compulsory and uh, it's better that your children uh, go and attend uh, because they will be clearing the doubts and they will give a gist of the whole 
uh, theory and they will also uh, do the practicals over there for your children. So it's important that you attend that. It also helps you to build that relationship with the study center uh, because they will be assessing your tutor mark uh, assessments and your exam also will happen in that center. So it is important that you do that. There are also internal marks for practical that this center will give you. So it's very important that you focus and attend the specific classes. Even if you are going to a school that uses NIOS like Orinco in our case, or Fab School, which is the online school, even if you are part of those things, this is compulsory and this should be done. Now examinations, like I mentioned earlier, it's public examinations. That is for everybody, whoever has registered, they will have it in April and May. Uh, or they will have it in October, November. During the pandemic, they pushed it forward. So this year it's happening in June. Uh, and uh, last year, the October exams happened in December, right? So um, I think they will come back to April, May and October, November very soon. Uh, uh, earlier also I said nine chances for completion of the course and you can write your exam in any recognized regional language. So this might not be of interest to the 100 people here today, but remember your maids, your drivers, anybody in your, in your companies that hasn't completed their education just because of limitation in English or whatever it is, you can feel free to get, uh, get them on board to NIOS and they can complete their education. It's very important for some people because that's what is causing a dip in their self-esteem because they're not educated according to the general national standards that we have. What are on-demand exams? I'm talking a little more here. Uh, because everybody feels what kind of a board this is. I can just go and tell I want to write an exam. It doesn't, doesn't happen like that. Uh, every month they will have, uh, they'll call for uh, these exams and they have a set uh, months for it. So June to September and December to March is only when they have the um, on-demand examinations. And uh, this is very good because it completely takes away the stress from learners because you can appear whenever you feel ready. And if you read some of the top most education systems in the world, they all speak about uh, children or learners being tested whenever they feel ready, whenever they have mastered the course. There are pitfalls to this, I do understand, because we can procrastinate, we can lose interest in all these aspects, but there's a huge merit in um, allowing learners to appear when they are ready. So this is... Um, uh, of course, uh, like I just mentioned, you can also use it if you have not done well in some other public exam like CBSE, ICSE, IGCSE, IB, whatever it is, and you can come here and complete. You can choose where uh, your exam date, you can choose your exam center as well, and you can choose which subject you want to appear as well. There is no compulsion of any sort. What are other things of NIOS? So there are vocational courses. You must go to the website nios.ac.in you will see a plethora of uh, uh, vocational courses. They have a very beautiful teacher training course as well. Uh, and some of the parents who have decided that I'll be homeschooling, you might want to do the DA uh, just if you want to kind of um, learn how children learn and things like that. Uh, and NIS has been awarded also multiple times across the world for what it is. Uh, and like I said, we only don't know about it because we never, uh, we went the parents seeking for it. Okay, so I'm done with uh, whatever I had to speak about NIOS. The people who joined only for NIOS, we will uh, take all your questions and we will, um, you know, let you go. And people then who are interested in Fab School or Orinco Academy, that's how I support learners. You can stay on. Uh, the rest, uh, we'll finish the questionnaire and then uh, you can leave. And there might be many of you whose questions are already answered as well. So let me just um, stop the share. I am going to um, go through the questions one by one. But if anybody has uh, as well, I will remove the mute aspect. But uh, you'll have to unmute yourself, speak, and then mute yourself again. So let me go through the questions. OK, uh, somebody is asking, after 10th, can I pursue uh, NIOS for PU? I've already mentioned, right? Once you finish your 10th grade, you can um, apply for the senior secondary in uh, NIOS itself. Or you could go to any other college.
Um, so uh, someone is asking, is third, fifth grade and all uh, have to be done? They haven't introduced it now. Someone feels that they've introduced grade three, five, eight now. No, it's there from beginning and it's not compulsory. Um, and uh, all, all of your entrance exams accept NIOS, medical, engineering, hospitality, law, anybody and everybody. Practicals, this is a big question in all of you for 10th and 12th grade. Um, the, your center will do practicals, but it is important that you have a small practical kit with you available at home or you sign up with anyone else, who's, any school also, many times they allow for a fee. Um, or if you are a um, group of people in that city, then come together and uh, you know um, maybe you can appoint a lab in charge just for that time and complete your practicals. Uh, They're interesting, but um, I don't know how many of us parents are really adept in doing it ourselves. Uh, for us, uh, because we use NIOS as part of the school, we have these facilities and our uh, online school, uh, we will have these facilities set up as part of various cities that people belong to. Um, if you want to switch to CBSC, ICSC after uh, you homeschool with NIOS, please feel free to do so. Um, you might have some schools will accept you and some schools which might not accept you, but in our country, we have a ton of schools. So just go to anybody that understands why you are homeschooling. Make sure that you're in line with what the schools are expecting. So, you know, sometimes I get children to my school who've never done math till fifth grade uh, or never done something till some grade, right? Or uh, uh, didn't like something. What happens in such a case is it's very difficult for mainstream schools to fit your child into the system. It, it is not so easy for them, right? So let them have an assessment. Let them tell you where your child fits and go by that. Uh, it will help you and your child have an easy transition. Uh, core subjects. This is a very good question. Please understand. Um, so I'll tell you what we do and see if you can do. So in grade eight, all our children, who are, whoever are under my care, we do something called as a passion to career program. And this program kind of helps the child go back and forth into their life till eighth grade. Uh, and also connect their future dreams, aspirations, whatever they have. And they, they triangulate their attitude, aptitude, achievement. All of this put together, they make a 10-year career path. Okay, In that 10-year career path, they place colleges, subjects, all of this, so that they can see, okay, this is what I need to get on to whatever I want to do for myself. And in that regard, um, you will be able to then choose the subjects. That's how our children choose subjects in their ninth grade, and then also in their 11th grade and their entrance coaching, all of that is in line. So if you're homeschooling, uh, think very deeply in your eighth grade, what you would like to do ahead, uh, get a career assessment done, get a career um, you know, um, counseling done, do all these things and then see how you can uh, choose the right subjects because then you'll know where am I going in 12? You'll know where am I going in college? What entrance coaching I need? So obviously if you want to go to engineering, you need the math and science. Right In my school, I also give economics with math and science. The reason is most of our children want to get into entrepreneurship or innovation and things like that. So they need some kind of a business sense is what I feel. But maybe your child wants psychology. Right, My son, for example, did math, science, psychology, business studies, economics, uh, because that's what he wanted to do in future. Right, So take subjects that are in line. Uh, for example, many parents feel in 12th grade, I don't like math, I'll just take sciences or I don't like uh, something in science, so I'll just take uh, math and some other subjects. Don't do that because most entrance exams in our country require uh, maths and sciences put together. So you have to study the system, then you choose your subjects. Don't choose by I like it, I don't like it and things like that. That is why children need an understanding of how they would like to uh, go ahead, right? So, uh, transfer of credit facility. This information is there on the NIOS website, how you can transfer credit facility in the sense that if you have done a couple of courses in other public exams, how you can move those credits here and uh, then uh, get your secondary or senior secondary uh, subjects. Uh, TMA is still possible. They are taking the TMAs and they are correcting it. Uh, this happens with you in your homes actually, you write your TMA at home and then you submit it to your center. Okay. 
then uh, yeah please feel free to go uh, back and forth in nios and other boards and schooling and schooling whatever it is uh, but like i said if you're getting into academic path then you'll have to be in line with whatever uh, it requires right so i can't get back into a school and say i don't want to do math if they have math right uh, at eighth grade level for example uh social behavior may get impacted when they join mainstream education yes it will if we aren't doing uh, our uh, homeschooling in a in a in the way that is conducive to the child's uh, development in that domain uh, many a times uh, parents are uh, you know not so social they don't have a circle around them and the children also might ra be raised like that but trust me human beings know how to fit into system so if we are not too possessive about their experiences they will get back they will have good bad ugly example uh, you know experiences and they will figure out a way to come around it's how equipped are you as parents to enable them on that journey and how much are you equipped to support them is very important if you feel uncomfortable about that then see if you can uh, pick a school that follows the same principles or you you can go for online education uh not recorded classes please uh not uh, anywhere where it is only based on academics uh you can look for something that like in fab school we are actually having collaborative classes and they are a parent child program put together and the only reason why we are coming online is to see how we can learn from each other so social emotional growth automatically happens so something like that should be we should be able to balance there are, there are a lot of benefits of homeschooling um so uh you know but if you have access to a school uh, that can uh, fit in the same philosophy please don't um you know compromise on that uh, uh if you ask me in orinko my uh, on site school the first curriculum is the ecosystem it's the people around right that is where we learn everything about life academics you know constitute about 30% of what we do so Uh, definitely a group will help more than just being by yourself but if you are in space places where you don't have access obviously you'll have to create that ecosystem um what else can anyone do 12th immediately after 10th uh, you need 2 years to complete 12th like 10th you cannot do it in one year 10th is allowed in one year right so 12th is not allowed in one year 2 years is required uh, i spoken about practicals already study centers around you will pop up when you start registering on your uh, on the nis website they will give you a choice of five study centers um no corporates can block you from using nis but then it's the mindset uh, many people are unaware and so they will they might ask you some uncomfortable uncomfortable questions like uh, was there something wrong with you that you went for home schooling or something like that you should have the courage to answer it uh, because i think in our country there's only one way you know we don't think of other things so if your child is with any special needs then you might want to employ um, some tutors who have experience in special education to teach them nis and depending on where you are in bangalore there are many centers and many people doing this um, and they should be able to help you with this and now online is working if your child is able to sit you will be able to have access to the best of the best in our country there's no lkg ukg or anything in nis so uh, fee your first exam will be in your third grade uh, feel free to you know learn at your pace till that level state boards also have open schooling system but they are not at this level that nis is and there is no need to actually because you have nis which you can directly do at uh, 10th grade the curriculum is exhaustive please remember that don't think it's easy or something it is at the level of uh you know um, your uh, uh, cbsc levels um if not more in certain subjects so yeah 
schools in in bangalore that uh, support nios depends on you if you want special schools the list is different if you want alternate schools the list is different so you have my number you can message me your need and i will send you the list uh, about fab school i'll speak in sometime once the people for nios are done with uh, visa recognition for nios yes it's there uh, my son is now preparing for masters abroad and we, uh, nios has never been questioned uh, and there are many students earlier also from my school who have uh, tried and there's no issue at all um yeah i think renu goel who's a part of orinco uh, she has been um completely in line with and i was from a long time trying to find all the information um so she has been answering your questions any which way thank you renu um if you're doing directly the fee is really negligible if you're using a school obviously you'll have to pay for the services uh is nio suited for children with learning disabilities yes not content wise content will still have to be broken down still adapted texts have to be made and child should be uh, in a state that they can understand and done have we done it yes uh, there is uh, kanchan deshpande on this group um who is uh, who has done an amazing job with five children with severe disabilities and they complete they are completing their nios now uh, I, I, and that too in the pandemic in the online also so uh, even i am amazed how you can do it but uh, please take external help don't try and do it by yourself so uh, that is something that we can if any one of you need uh, this support you can message me and i can share with uh, you her number she takes online classes for nios uh, for special needs children and um, yeah so that's what it is okay um if uh, rajkumar you're asking for nios when your children are 6 years old uh, what you do is uh, look go to ob you have down underneath that you have a registration online so that should be able to uh, give you guidance anyway okay so i think i'm almost ending this hour and and now we can go on to other things uh all the books are given by nios amit for your question all the books whether it is your practical books your tutor marked assessments your textbooks everything will come home to you and it's also available online so don't worry at all about it practical kit won't be available in the sense the material won't come to your house but the material is also something uh mostly about 70% of the time you will be able to figure out yourself but of course the chemicals and all of that you will have to take somebody's help for it okay uh exam centers outside india as well and i've heard people uh, uh, being allowed to write nios in indian consulates depends on the consulate um so yeah i mean it is uh, amazing and nios is an amazing book all right okay so uh, those who want to know about fab school i'm just going to give you a gist there will be a fab school uh, open house soon fab school is the online k12 school uh, that i have launched in 2019 and uh, before the pandemic actually but i didn't think that pandemic will um, bring about uh, the need for it even much more my focus was only on pure home schoolers um that um, you know i thought will benefit from a structured program because i get so many people asking me about structured uh, program for nis because after a while after the child is about 5th uh, grade or you know 10 12 years of old uh, age the parents are not able to keep up and uh, give that much time right so that's why uh, they want external help and they want something in line with homeschooling principles because uh, we homeschoolers are not uh, output based we are experience based and most most coaching centers or whatever it is everybody is output based right so that's the main difference so fab school is a k12 online school fab school has many aspects of what we do at our orinco of course what is done at orinco cannot be replaced in any online platform because we are almost 90% hands on um, and we have a very different uh, focus on how children self learn so fab school will is more of a parent child engagement uh something where um the child will have online interactions with people across the globe uh 
who are interested in that age group in those subjects. It will be based on the ICSC curriculum and you will have NIOS backbone uh, where you can do your exams in NIOS through, uh, through us. Plus you can finish your 10th and 12th. You'll have benefits of the passion to career program and all those things that I just spoke about. Uh, our 10th and 12th NIOS is an experiential program. It is not exam completion program only. So if you're interested in only exam preparation, then you may use any tutors that you find or you yourself can step in because completion is not our focus only. Our focus is how this child can utilize learning because that's always been my focus in whenever I work with children. Uh, so FAB School, I will send across information. If you all, uh, any of you here are interested, just send me a message. You've been uh, WhatsApping me any which ways and I will uh, let you know.